back. Alright, I'm gonna pick it back up. I know that folks might be trying to find their way back. Um, and so we'll kind of work from there. And then as I see people pop in, we'll keep it going. Um, so, uh, so, something I'm noticing in this one too is just like the. all these layers of rhymes that um Jayco put into this and i think as writers rap writers i think this is one of those skills that um can start to develop over time like I, i've noticed in my own uh practice is that um i do find myself gravitating towards um the repetition of sound when i'm writing and so even if uh, um i'm not focusing on the end rhymes the other internal rhyming that's happening can almost be incidental and by accident because i'm just i'm so used to like you know i'm, I'm writing a, a rap song right so uh the repetition of sound is what creates the the melody in it um so versus like if you were just writing in prose where the most important thing is just the clarity of your idea then you're not necessarily going to be repeating sounds because the sing-song equality of the repetition of the sounds could get in the way of the clarity of the idea if people aren't expecting um, expecting that. So, um, all right, we're gonna look at another one, and then we're gonna probably do some comparison to show out some things. Uh, if you've made it back, and because uh, uh, the computer was like, help. Let me know if you're back in the chat. I could keep it more interactive. Uh, but if you're not back in the chat, then you know, I'll just kind of kind of uh, do some demonstration of this as far as um, what's going on uh, and what I notice in it. <clears throat> All right, so the next uh, sample, lyric sample we're looking at is from Friends by J. Cole. Um, this joint is, I believe this is on actually KOD and uh, I enjoy KOD. That was a nice, that was a nice one. Um, welcome back, football, rapid. Um, so in the same thing, man. Let's kind of do the, the the same process. I'll take three minutes and just notice what you notice about um, the verse. Let me read it, I guess, real quick. I'm smoking medical grade, but I ain't got prescription. All the way in Cali where there ain't no precipitation. Feeling like the only one that made it. And I hate it for my, cause they ain't got ambition. And again, I'm not rapping it um, well cause I did not practice this verse to rap it. <laughs> so I'm not gonna uh, do you a disservice like that. Uh, but go ahead and, um, Take three minutes and just notice what you notice. Um, keep in mind, if you are a connoisseur of the cannabis, do it responsibly. Make sure you are, it's legal where you are at. <laughs> and you are of legal age. And I am not endorsing the use. <laughs> We're just looking at it as a piece of literature. So we're looking at, um, see what you notice. See, 
see if you can pick up the, the rhyme. So now we kind of identified like the major N rhymes. See if you can start finding some of those other internal rhymes. And if you can, dig to this, dig down to the syllables. Last class stream, we talked about the intentional use of repetition. And, you know, there's, this is, I would consider this like repetition in the middle. I forget what the actual term is, but that's not the point. The pattern is the point, not the term. Those are, if you notice the pattern, then you can repeat it. You don't need the term to, to notice the pattern. About 10 more seconds. I ain't got, they ain't got, they ain't got, yep. All right, all right, all right. Yes. There it is. You caught that one too. That made it. Hate it. Okay. And then if we're looking at the Hate made, we got the grade here. So as we're listening to this stuff all the way. Um smoking that did like again I'm getting deep into the syllable stuff, but you know, no one's really saying smoking. We say smoke in and then the the and the in have a little bit of a slant around their relationship there. In fill in, right? It's probably the most common. I feel like the short I sound is probably the most common rhyme sound that we use in rap, maybe even in English language. I don't know. Uh, fill in like the only one that made it, and I. So then we got the like, we got the I. So all these layers of rhymes that are happening there. Um, so you'll, you'll again start just noticing how even though some of these last rhymes aren't um, placed in the same pattern. Um, Cali. And then kind of with only, right? The back pass for lonely and Cali. Um, so these rhymes aren't like lined up exactly. So our ear will pick it up, but we may not notice it but on first pass, right? And for us, this is why we kind of take the time to just look at this stuff because then we're seeing like, oh, it's not just about, you know, having multi-syllable rhymes just at the, you know, the end, right? And it's it's not even, I mean, yes, you can get kind of get into this like, um, uh, 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 the Rock Him Foundation. I think Eminem is really taken to another place where it's like you're rhyming every single syllable in the line. You can you can get to, to that level of matching rhyme um, and placement, but you don't have to always match the rhyme with the placement. And there's still 
a musical quality that gets picked up. And I think that's, again, another um, master move by uh, J. Cole, right? It's just understanding that, right? Um, okay, let's do, let's do the third one. I'm going to kind of keep... Let me find where my third one go. What? Did I skip it? Ah. My bad. I wanted to start there, but that's fine. All right, let's do it again. So this one is from his latest off season. I'm at one of this is probably my favorite song on the uh, on the joint. Let go my hand. And uh, so sometimes I question whether this ish matters. Putting substance into a world so used to instant gratification. I found this instrumental on my phone while on vacation. I think it's um, I, I think it's his name. It maybe Ib sent it a year ago or so. So this is four bars from that song, and I'm reading it in a way. I'm I'm not rapping it. I'm just reading it, right? But if you've listened to Let Go My Hand recently, um, something is interesting happening with the word gratification. And the same thing that's happening with the word instant gratification is kind of happening in the other two verses. All right. But first, before we talk about that, let's just notice the rhymes. So let's do three minutes again. Type it up as you see it. And then let's... Uh, This one too, it, it's, see if you can catch it. If you haven't heard the song, let me know. Tell me in the chat if you haven't heard this song yet. Let Go My Hand by J. Cole, it's on this newest one, the off season. Vacation, vacation, all right. So, question. It's a, and I really like it's the all the shuns. <laughs> it's like you can get a big list of uh, shuns and, and have rhymes for days. Putting something or a substance, I think. Is that what you're going for? Substance. Yeah, they kind of rhyme with each other a little bit, right? Some slam rhyme right there, but in substance. Uh, in, uh, in. Yeah. It's... About another minute. Go over so. All right. have to know the song to catch one of them to, to know how he makes this work because I think just looking at the lyrics and not knowing the song and how it sounds um, you, you may miss uh, how he makes like the first line actually work rhyming wise uh, you're saying two right. I mean I do see like the end two kind of repetition of that Two. Two on my phone, my phone. All right, all right, all right. Here. Okay. So and then some another repetition of just some time something. I found this instrumental. You can almost even say the strum of it as well. And, you know, and 
my thinking on all this, like, you may be asking yourself, like, do I really need to, like, um, like, when you're writing, I don't necessarily want you to go in and, like, stress every single syllable of your word, right? But what I do, I do just want you to recognize the pattern of, the, the, of like, how rhyming is occurring even though it's not in the most obvious places and that it does uh, again I don't want you to stress syllables just for the sake of stressing syllables but if you're trying to create um you haven't listened to the song yet yeah if you uh, are trying to create an effect a musical effect with rapping and you're not you know doing melody you're just you know speaking then you know when it when you have to make a choice between like okay i could say the or an right the might be the better choice because you've noticed that you're using a lot of the uh sound through the verse or an might be a better choice like a n might be a better choice because you're using a lot of that sound in the verse and that makes it more musical right and so these are just things that you'll start to as you write more and freestyle more truthfully um you'll start to pick up and your brain kind of starts just getting into that pattern seeking mode. Okay. Um, and then of course, you know, you got your eye, the repetition of eye there. And again, I don't really think J. Cole's like, yeah, I'm gonna repeat eye because it sucked musically. It's like, no, he's just, you know, telling a story, right? But the repetition is what kind of creates the pattern, creates the effect that pulls us in. Um, yeah, another one too. This ish. <laughs> Right? That's why it's not this stuff. The stuff in this don't rhyme. <laughs> All right, so he does something here. So I don't know if you've heard it, but essentially he takes the end rhyme of uh, matters and rhymes it with gratification, but the gratification. So it's like... matters and then he does kind of what he did in the second this other verse that we were looking at it's actually like this kind of bent over the bar so it's like grata and then vacation starts make sure I can spell half the word right starts the next line does that make sense So sometimes I question whether this ish matters, putting substance into something in the world that's so used to instant gratification. I found this instrumental on my phone while on vacation. Uh, Ibs sent it, or I've sent it a year ago or so. So are you hearing, again, you can go listen to the song and obviously he'll do it much better than me, but this is the thing I kind of want to highlight. How he, this is something in his technique that I, I just want you to notice. Um, so did you, you catch that? In this verse, Crooked Smile. Was it Crooked Smile? No, this one. Friends. <laughs> Do you see where he, he does it again? Can you find out where he does it again? Where he does that? Splits a word in two and starts the other half of the word on the next line. Do folks see it there? second line right so it's the same it's he's writing ah, that's not what I want it he's writing prescription <laughs> with persipa and then the next part tation starts the next line Right. 
And so essentially he's rhyming one word prescription and then he's rhyming it with half of another word, right? And then, you know, making it, um, bending over to the next. So like, did you know you could do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you, you really can do anything you want as long as it works. <clears throat> yeah, like that right there. So like, if you've ever been in a moment freestyling or even writing, where it's like, you want to say, like, cause if you think about the second line here, right? All the way in Cali where they ain't got no precipitation, right? He's basically saying it doesn't rain in Cali, right? Pre precipitation does not, as a whole word, does not rhyme with prescription, right? But once you start paying attention to each sound of a word and each syllable, then you can start, okay, I can rhyme this half of a word with this ending of a word and then continue the thought into the next line, right? And then what happens with us as, as listeners is that, you know, when you hear the line, like smoking medical grade, but I ain't got, I ain't got prescription all the way in Cali where they ain't got precipa. You're like, precipa is not a word. And so your curiosity is raised. Hmm. Huh. Like what precipa, what tation. And then because it's the start of the next line, it finishes out. Um, I have to listen to those two to do it. Um, big scar and gonna I might maybe I, I gotta I gotta spend some time with them um but you see how the percipa is not a word the tation finishes the word at the start of the next line and now your your attention still going going into the feeling like the only one that made it right and now here's uh see if you notice where it's done in this one it's the same technique, but it's not so much about dividing up a word. So see if you can find that moment where J. Cole is kind of like stopping something halfway through um, the thought. It's not gonna be a word, but it's gonna be kind of like the thought where it kind of gives you like, oh, something else is coming. So they tell me I should fix my grill because I got money now. I ain't got, I ain't gonna sit around in front like I ain't thought about it. A perfect smile is more appealing, but it's funny how my ish is crooked. Look at it. Look at how far I done got without it. See me, me and reading, I put words in that don't actually aren't there. <laughs> and I still teach English. What? You catch where He's doing the uh, kind of stopping a thought halfway and then continuing it in the next line. Any guesses where, where it's happening? All right, line three, you'd think? Yeah, for those joining, this is Hip Hop Live For Life. It's basically life in through the lens of hip hop literature. It's a real class that I teach in high schools that I'm also teaching online, cause why not? <laughs> yeah, line three, right? Uh, the phrase essentially is this, but uh, keep doing that. Get to the pen, get to the pen. Um, but, so really, I guess we can look at it this way, right? The whole thought is this, but 
it's funny how my ish is crooked and then da 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 on and on from there, right? That's the whole thought. But what happens is the bar ends here and then all of this starts the next line. So it creates that effect again, right? Where it ends with, but it's funny how it's like a cliffhanger. Like you're like, like what? what's funny? Like it, it makes you lean in and it's in line three, right? Um, because our attention starts to peak generally at the beginning of a verse and then essentially every four bars. So like line four, usually our ears are perking up, right? Because we've, we've just come to expect that pattern, right? Um, so the, uh, but it's funny how is the cliffhanger, right? At line three, which helps our attention peak anymore. And then he finishes the thought, um, you know, my ish is crooked and it goes on from there. And he finishes the bar and finishes out that, um, this A, B rhyme scheme. So this was like the rhyme scheme of A and then the about it is the rhyme scheme of B. So, all right. Or actually, it's like this A, B, A, B, all right. So this is one of those um, techniques that, you know, there's a term for it and everything. I don't know, if, does anybody know what the term is? Just off the, of, off the of jump. If you don't know, it's okay. Go by the name of Lil Kid Mo. All right, Lil Kid Mo, I see you. Welcome to Hip Hop Live for Life. And this is class of hill hold every Saturday. Um, so, so if you don't know the term, it's all right. The term, I believe, it is called enjambment. And, and I believe it's actually French. In, in, hold on, can I write that better? Jeez. My white blackboard skills are not on point right now. So that's the term. And it's a, it's originally in French, but essentially it's that technique of where a line breaks in a way that interrupts the thought, that interrupts the complete thought. Um, and so J. Cole's a master at this. Um, he, cause I was doing a lot of listening to J. Cole to kind of find different examples of where he does this. And he does it a lot, but there's times when it's uh, uh, like it still doesn't, it, it, you wouldn't notice it by hearing it because of how well the rhyme is placed and how well like it's, it's, it's put together. But so these are the ones that were like, okay, there's clearly like a, another thought coming um, to make the enjambment really um, stick out to you. But really it's just a cliffhanger. Right, so you can think of it like that. It's like if you need something to rhyme, you know, create a cliff that, it, and you can't make the whole word rhyme, but you can make part of the word rhyme. Create a cliffhanger bar, right? Where it's like, it's like again, it's like the end of Netflix shows, right? That make you binge over and over and over, right? It's like they leave you with like, what's coming up next? <laughs> yeah, the beat's nice. Beats from uh, these epidemic sounds a lot. So some takeaways. Oh, there's another thing. Do y'all notice how what J. Cole does when he's doing like these alternative rhyme schemes? Especially in this one. Let's go in this one. 
like look at line number four in particular it's like how does he make that make that work so now i'm thinking, talking about this line right here do y'all notice what it's like and you probably listen to the song but there's even other places where like his fourth line right out of a out of a set of four right it's not just going to be the same rhyming um, pattern of course he has songs where he does repeat the same rhyme sound all the way through you know i mean jay cole is you know a master with the pen like there's no question about that so as far as like um people who like strive to be lyricists as rap writers they tend to want to master all styles right and i think j cole is one of those people that has done that where you know he, he knows how to write to any type of beat and and match the style and cadence that you know and still be able to say things um that that are you know true to his story true to what he represents you know authentic vulnerable um and that's why I, I appreciate J. Cole. But if you don't notice in the last line here, like one of the things that you can uh, do, and this is really good for freestyling as well. I'm always going to talk about freestyling. I know people are into the rap writing, but you should be freestyling too. Um, one of the things is like, okay, if you are freestyling and you get to a point where like, okay, you set up a rhyme and you cannot think of something that rhymes with that word in that moment, then you can pick up something you said recently and rhyme with that. So this last line where he says, you know, sent it a year ago or so, that a ago or so satisfies the need for a rhyme in the fourth line. And then that's what really um, makes, that that still keeps you in there. You're, you're not thinking that, oh, he fell off, right? And so he's doing all this, you know, this eternal rhyme stuff. He's doing the cliffhanger and jambit stuff. And then he's doing these alternative rhyme schemes um, that, and then and then telling like really, you know, compelling stories uh, all at the same time. All right, so I guess that's, you know, takeaways, right? So, I wanna do this. So let's do like another three minutes and just ask like, just kind of based on everything that you saw and heard, like what are some of the takeaways that you have? And I'm actually wanna capture them here because I wanna, you know, get feedback on like what's resonating for people as far as like how to take this and improve it, improve your craft with it. So what do you take away? What, what are some of the things that caught your attention that you feel like you can use um i'll just kind of give you the visual cue there so you can kind of see and uh, yeah put it in the chat let me know if uh i'll be wrapping up here pretty soon y'all it's a fun one it was a fun one I have some ideas. I'm gonna capture some for myself real quick. Um,
A B A B. Yeah. Some folks, you know, came in a little bit. Rhyme trio words. Interesting. Can you say more about the rhyme tree? I'm, I'm curious what you what you mean by that. teach I'm learning as well word association okay yeah I mean we didn't really dive into um, you know the, the, the cognitive basically we didn't get into the library stuff but we started looking at the association and connections between words and all that um, but of course that all that stuff is there I mean that's another level uh, to it as well uh, and you say words that sound alike okay so that's what you mean by rhyme tree nice word association yeah um so i took away like the internal rhymes to close the bar so like that you can use in a quick internal rhyme to have like a um to to end a four bar section in a way even if you don't want to rhyme the same four bar uh, rhyme word all the way through uh, I think the idea of varying the rhyme placement to sound natural and musical because I think that's one thing about J. Cole is that when you're listening to it you could tell he's you know technically gifted but it also has a natural quality to it right yeah uh, it's, it's definitely a good freestyle technique that whole internal rhyme thing um, but yeah, varying the rhyme placement where it's not, you're using the same sounds, but you're not using them always in a predictable way, um, still maintains a musical quality without it, um, sounding like, I mean, sounding like Eminem, right? Like Eminem is great. And if you listen, like it, it does not sound like natural conversation. And I'm not saying it should, I'm just saying this is a point of difference, Right between like an Eminem rhyme every syllable type verse and song and J. Cole where there's a lot of rhyme happening, but it's happening in varied spots, you know, but still gives you the end rhyme to be the anchors to feed that anticipation piece. And then I just thought of the idea of like the enjambit being like the Netflix, uh, Netflix cliffhanger, you know? Yeah. Exactly. So, and again, for us, because we're looking at, at a craft, right? So if I want to get to that more lyrical, uh, and, and yeah, more lyrical and more, it sounds more like, um, it sounds like almost like another language, right? I mean, I, I think we've seen, uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but he does like that, you know, Eminem as a dad. <laughs> he's basically rhyming everything like through daily life and it's like a, a big problem right like that doesn't sound like natural conversation but it sounds good to listen to uh, to a point and then there's sounding natural and it sounds good to listen to to a point and so again the art is being able to go between um, two extremes depending on what a, a, a intention that you have for your song and for your writing so that is um so I'm not saying one way is good or the other. I'm saying look and notice what all these um, you know, masters of the craft do and then 
be able to replicate what you need to replicate if you want to have that a similar kind of effect, right? You can use the Enjambit style of uh, the cliffhanger and not be biting J. Cole, right? But you're still taking that technique and using it for yourself. Is that, hopefully that makes sense for folks. Because I think uh, somebody brought it up like, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple streams ago about like this idea of like right like and like, oh, you're just biting someone. And it's like, nah, this is not about biting. This is about actually studying and doing the, uh, you know, the research, right? Spending the time with the craft to actually get to uh, what's going on there. So um, cool. So I, I got some time. If y'all want to uh, do some quick q and I'm, I'm down to answer some questions. Uh, just to support the channel and also just to support the channel, obviously, by, you know, subscribing, liking, all that stuff, but maybe sharing it with somebody you think would enjoy, um, you know, learning about uh, themselves and rap in this way. Um, but also, I have this uh, Rhyme Masters journal. Uh, matter of, uh, I keep putting Rhyme Masters as Substack. That is not it. Uh, shoot. All right. I'm going to show you what it actually looks like too many names for things but it's basically the rise masters journal it's in the description of the video um so every week generally on sundays i'll send out uh tips and insights from my rap practice uh to help you grow in your rap practice and so you can subscribe to that and this is what it looks like when you finally get there because i'm loading it up now and then I just recently did this, man. We have a growing community of growth minded rappers. And if you want to join, it's free to join. It's at rhymemasters.com. And essentially that's where um, a lot of the, I'm gonna, I'm putting more questions there, more prompts there. Uh, you'll have access to some, uh, some drills. Like I'm trying to do like a drill at least once a month. Um, so there's a free tier that gets you connected. And then if you actually want to partake in our ciphers uh appreciate you man if you want to partake in our ciphers that we have every friday 8 30 to 10 30 p.m pacific standard time um then you can try out the 30 day uh i guess community membership which is normally 10 bucks a month but we have a 30 day trial on that so you can check that out if you're into it uh, but more than anything, if you're, you know, if you don't have the funds, but you're just down, join for free, join the, uh, join the journal, um, and stay connected so that, uh, you know, my, my goal is to impact. It's not so much about, you know, it's not, it's not about a quick buck. It's about, um, creating a space where we can, yes, we want to have careers. Yes. We want to make music and have people love it. But if that doesn't happen, we're the type of people that still will be writing raps and freestyling. And I think we need a, we need a community to practice that. So, sign up to the journal, appreciate that. Got a good one coming out this, this week. Gonna work on that here in a little bit. So, there, that's that. What, you didn't load? Man, you're tripping. Anyway, <laughs> questions for me? Before we get out of here, you know, enjoy your Saturday. Lonzo Chase, I appreciate you. And uh, Little Kid Mo, I appreciate you. Football Rapid, I appreciate you as well. Young Hollow the Don, I appreciate you, you as well. I will look into uh, Big Scar and Gunna. See what I get. Yeah, I'm glad that that is the point. It's just helping people learn and grow in the craft. So uh, you know we don't keep doing it. I think people get another thing that happens is people get uh, detoured when they're not getting that feedback. You know, because you're, you're, again, you think there's only one way. It's like, I gotta, if I'm a good rapper, I'll have a career. And having a career and being a good rapper can kind of be like mutually exclusive things because a good rapper is subjective. 
But if you think that and like your career is not taking off and people aren't responding to your music, then you might be tempted to quit and stop. And like, that's what I don't want. I want, you know, if you if you have something that you love, helps you express yourself, helps you grow, helps you, um, you know, see the world in a different way, then you know how to keep doing it, even if you can't turn it into commerce. So, but I'm also noticing people in the community have been able to, by having a, a growth mindset around it, they've been able to actually make some better strides and see more progress in the career. So, right like token. All right, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna take some notes because I'm not gonna lie, these are names I don't know yet. But I will spend some time and uh, see what I can do. Um, it probably won't be the next class just because since I'm not too familiar with them just yet, um, you know, I gotta spend some time to kind of see what see what's there. Uh, so I got token, then there's what? Big scar. And then hopefully too, right? They have some uh and then gonna. I don't know if Young Hollow to Don is still there, but I'm assuming bro is just kind of like, you know, it's like, yeah, that was dope, bro. And his name is not Gunna Bro. <laughs> but if you can clarify that, if anybody can clarify that for me, that would be great. But I'm pretty sure it's just Gunna. But it could be Gunna Bro. It could be his name. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, I'll, I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, next class will be next week, next Saturday, uh, 29th, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, where are we watching from? Are we uh, in the States? Are we outside of the States? I'm just curious. And then my last little bit. My last little fun question and kind of close us out is um, the UK. All right, UK holding strong. Oh, there's not enough air horns in this class today. My bad. I need more air horns. Um, all right, at a concert or you're in the mic, do you tell people to clap your hands or hands in the air? Which do, which one do you gravitate towards? Or which one do you like? Clap your hands or hands in the air? Since we're, looks like we'll be getting back to North Island. Nice. <laughs> nice indeed. <laughs> I like it. It's like, I'm, it's like I'm teaching the world how to rap. I like that. <laughs> so clap your hands or hands in the air. I think personally for me is clap your hands. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> ATL. Hip hop stocks, huh? Atlanta. Yeah, that's cool. There's actually a. I know of a cipher that's like based out of Atlanta that they do online. Have you heard about that, Alonzo? Mm, hip hop stocks. Yeah. That's cool. Are you writing right now, football rapid? Are you freestyling? Like, how are you trying to learn?
trying to freestyle or try to do it all. I suggest doing it all. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yep. Cool. What's it called? Uh, shoot. My bad. I'll try to find out. I, for, I forget what they call it. But it's a similar kind of thing. Uh, like a, a Zoom meet and, you know, folks from who are part of the their crew rep. But I think they were also doing it in person and then they took it online. So I don't know what Georgia is doing as far as like quarantine and all that stuff and mask, but y'all might be y'all might be back uh, back at it. And we might have the events again, but but check it out if you can. Just I don't know again. I don't know the name. I just know it's based out of Atlanta. <laughs> all right. Well, I am. Uh, gonna head out so yeah please check the uh the game rhyme masters journal substack why are you acting like you can't be rich did i spell it wrong oh what help if i spelled it right here it is yeah if you spell the link right then it should load what am i still not spelling this right I should, I'll, I'll look it up too and hopefully I'll have it. Um, oh, you know what it is. Stacks is sub. So it's rhyme. Masters journal sub stack. That's what we want. There it is. Yes. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> and uh, yeah, generally every week I try to throw some insights on there. So last week's was about. Um, doing some uh, mental athlete training, basically learning how to use memory palaces uh, for freestyle rap and then vice versa, like learning how to use freestyle rap to improve my memory. And so this was a little bit of uh, my journey on that. So this week I'm talking about, uh, I don't even know what I'm calling it this week, but we can get... We get stuck in things because we're, we hold on to things. And sometimes we have to learn how to let go. And so I'm kind of writing about that. We gotta learn how to let go, especially when we're freestyling. But then, of course, in life as well. That's part of the whole thing. Okay, for real. I guess I'm the king of long goodbyes. <laughs> I'm about to head out. Um, Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and attention. I will uh, see you next week. And uh, until then, release more genius over doubt, y'all. Peace.